представить нашего гостя Катерина Раска. Она приехала сюда из Сталина, чтобы сыграть нам эстонскую международную традиционную музыку на Варгане, на Волынке. И представить свой диск Фарму Пил. Катерина 10 лет играет на Варгане, она занималась исследованиями о традиционной музыке Эстонии искала в архивах, пыталась как бы снимать с старых записей игру старых мастеров и как бы чтобы продлилась эта традиция. Вот. И сейчас она что-то покажет нам на эту тему и что-нибудь скажет тоже. Mm -hmm. Хорошо. Я, я думаю, что это не я могу говорить тоже то по-английски, потому что мои русские. Okay. Окей, okay, вы все oh, понимаете. Вы 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 понимаете. Можно задавать вопрос? Да, у нас формальная остановка, можно задавать. Мне очень нравится варган и музык. Варган музык. Варганная музыка. Да. Сейчас я играла очень много эстонский варган. А ты говори по-эстонски, мы все равно поймем. Я сейчас английский, английского не знаю, но я все понял, что ты говорил. А, окей. Мы, наверное, по-эстонски поймем. Я могу попробовать. Как окей по-эстонски? Пармобиль. Пармобиль это окей. Пармобиль. Серега, представьте спокойно. Парм это... Слепень. Мне очень нравится, что этот инструмент называется пармобиль, потому что это не только инструмент, а это парму. And in, in old times it was also called mouth harp or um, or the jaw harp or mouth uh, instrument. But uh, it's so cool that uh, nowadays it's, uh, it has one name and it's Parmobil. I really like it. And uh, while I did the uh, wow, uh, while I did the album, also I a little bit played around with the name of the instrument and uh, paid attention to it. Mm -hmm. And uh, now today I play a Budu Igrat uh, Estotsky music, Varganu uh, Varganicheski uh, music. Chuchute Toshe Tansu 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 I started with a tune, dance tune from Kihno Island. It's a small island in Estonia, and it's called Kihnoma after the name of the island.
Спасибо. This tune was the first tune that I ever uh, played with the bagpipe uh, um, from a Kaib recording. It was my first ever experience doing notation, listening to this weird sounding uh, Kaib tapes that were uh, taken from the wax tape. I don't even know if you have, if you know what it is. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. You also have some? Yeah. Mm, it's really cool. Mm. Uh, so you translated it to uh, uh, this yeah? Yes. Mm -hmm. And w what was the original instrument? Valonka. Uh -huh. mm. uh, in Estonia we have, uh, how to say, around nine uh, players that we know of uh, played uh, Valonka before. And they are all so different, their playing style is very different because they played uh, their own made instruments and uh, every instrument sounded differently, the scales are different and everything. So Jan Bicht, he had really cool style with a lot of staccato and this cover technique. I liked him very much. And his tunes are very characteristic and cool to play on Mozart. Also maybe a bit tricky, but... Matter What's the practice. Estonian name for the bagpipe? Torugel. Torugel. Yes. Uh, what does it mean? Uh, toru is a pipe and pil is instrument like uh, parmugel, yeah. torugel. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Very easy. Mm. Um, I know uh, like a lot of Russian are very into Norwegian music. I, uh, I don't want to play the tunes that are only in, on the CD, but uh, to play a little different stuff. Recently I was in Oslo and participated in a course where I learned two hullings. I, and I also started to train a bit this different technique. I will play it now. Two hullings. Uh, yeah, the name I can tell later. Not the names, but the uh, names. Uh, the people names that I these tunes are taken after. So it is a uh, dancing in the region thing. Yes. Uh, is it from the last festival of Congo Festival? Yes. Ah, yes. Okay. Exactly. Thank <laughs> you. 
next uh, uh, one polka that was played after a uh, very good player, uh, Willem Ilume, Northall player, Parmo Pilimenge, and then a uh, very famous dance tune in Gliska. instrument at home but uh, not very many play it like uh, so detailed and it was times when people just uh, did like rhythmical things for me the instrument uh, got familiar from the like when I was very young uh, in the prim uh, pri primary school we were uh, taken to the cinema to hear the to watch nature uh, movies and and often in the nature movie there was soundtrack with which went like this.
and the top of that you had the picture of the frogs or whatever trees or something <laughs> and uh, yes <laughs> and from that time I had a kind of association with the sound and I had the imitation that it uh, was it must have been like wooden blocks which had some kind of rubber around and that if you pull this string yeah, then it make this sound <laughs> and then when I w went to high school we had an ensemble playing at school and uh, one of the guys play played this music the sound again and then I, I went to ask what was this instrument that produced this sound and I was very amazed when I saw this metal instrument instead of the block that I uh, thought. And then I ordered this instrument myself as well, but I, at that time, I couldn't really make sound out. So I put it in the shelf somewhere and took it out again in the high school. No, sorry, in the university time. And, uh, yeah, and uh, therefore, because uh, this, uh, in Estonia right now, a lot of people have started to play melodies, or we are actually, not me personally, there are other players. I have been in abroad many years, so it's uh, mostly the other people who organize the festival in Estonia. So they are pro like giving this music to a lot of people, and uh, it's not only used for this na nature sound so much anymore, but more uh, advanced. and. Uh, also to let people know that there are many players uh, outside and many people who make the instruments in many countries, especially in Ukraine and in Russia, it seems to be very crazy. Like, I mean, positively crazy situation. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's so cool. And uh, I would like Estonian people to be aware of this also, that uh, you don't have only Brit Moppel who is making instruments. So I present... <laughs> yes. I didn't sh see him at all in Estonia. I, hope I was hoping to meet him, but uh, he didn't. Uh, maybe the weather was too cold. But <laughs> anyway, in this CD, I present uh, different instruments and uh, play uh, the makers also. So uh, I'm gonna play you some classical um, polkas. Played by. Uh, Peter Wekman, uh, one was called Koeki Polka, other one was Mardi Tangi Polka. I'm not really sure what Kumbi is, but um, 
In Estonia, uh, the year was uh, 1922, uh, when uh, the folk musicians, like, I mean, we call them folk musicians, they were at that time like regular people living in the farms and uh, doing their everyday stuff, but uh, they also had some music playing skills. And uh, so uh, the, at that time, the people realized that uh, there are still some people living in the countryside who knows the traditional music or music from the villages. And uh, this guy was August Polst, who started traveling around the country and, and uh, invited the people who could play the music at that time to uh, the capital to present them for the people. Uh, mostly the city people, they didn't know anymore that uh, maybe bagpipe exists or there are like mouth art music or something. Do you need to, does uh, any mind? Yeah? yeah. Это очень интересно. Очень интересно. Вообще было бы хорошо, да, потому что вообще ничего не понятно мне. А, окей, это было. Ну интересно. Я могу попробовать. Ну, окей, первый раз фольк, фольк, народный музык на сцен, на лава, стейдж. Это был тебе. 1922. Ah, yeah. And uh, like the guy that the Peter Wegman, yeah, I play his music. Петер Векман начал делать первые фольклорные экспедиции по Эстонии, собирать. Нет, нет, нет. Он был он был просто фермером. Он был просто. Мы ему сейчас сказали, что это. Он был like he was from one guy from other people who was in this group of people who played народный музык первый раз на концерт холл, концертный зал. Это был очень важный, и это был очень-очень популярный. И после этого концерт в Таллине, другие концерты начинали, начинала happen. Все, все, все country. По всей стране. Прошли такие концерты. Короче, там до этого 22 -го года были просто люди, которые там на ферму занимались, чем попало, и между делом играли. Yes. Вот. В общем, а, после этого а, значит, вот, съездил человек, собрал их всех и сделал концерт. Да, Петер, он и, был, да. может быть, 52 год, и он был uh, one of the youngest on stage. Mm -hmm. uh, so, like, uh, it was really the last moment, and после этих концертов тоже много рекордингс happened. Uh, it, uh, thanks to that we have those tunes that uh, many of those tunes we play today. It goes like this.
plays the same uh, <coughs> speed and the same temp like before, like you play in 19? No, I think uh, I play also a bit differently because uh, I think I play a little bit more. Uh, I like to manipulate with the air and uh, volume and everything. If we listen to the recordings, they play very straight and like very like, no, how to say? Just uh, rhythm. And not only rhythm, but you know, they were like farmers and they do work and they don't have time to think <laughs> like uh, like uh, manipulation in music and all this, uh, I don't know. They are like, you have to play for dance, you know, like serious Estonian guys. <laughs> they are like, oh, I have to play for work, dance and okay, I do it. And they do it like, <laughs> like very seriously and straight into your face something. But it's uh, also cool. But, uh, and it's also like a uh, funny fact that uh, it used to be only guys who play folk music, uh, all the instruments, but now somehow women take over mm. in Estonia. Like uh, guys, when they come to study folk music, they mostly play mandolin or guitar or something mm. like this. Women, they like uh, such kind of other instruments. The instruments that were usually men instruments before. It's more cooler to play this or, or than do a little mandolin maybe. Mm. I don't know, but I think this is uh, why uh, like, that, that's the reason to play differently today, like we do, <laughs> like something more. Uh, and, uh, so uh, in Estonia there is no tradition of uh, women playing instruments? And they were mostly singers mm. and a few played some, uh, Kannel maybe is more a uh, woman thing, mm. but um, if he, mostly it was singers, okay. very rarely some instrument. Uh, did men sing too? They did also, but uh, not as much as women maybe. Mm. I mean, they did also actually, there are a lot of dirty songs and such. Uh, ah. And uh, there are a lot of dirty songs uh, and uh, soldier song and men songs. Mm. But uh, still I think women did more. But uh, I mean, I don't know for sure. I don't give my hands mm. or hands. And can you tell a few words about polka music? Ah, yes. I mean, uh, is it like a genre or? Yes. Uh, I think it is. Uh, it's a dance music and uh, it's like a uh, genre. Mm -hmm. mm. So, and what are the features? Uh, what do you mean? Uh, well, I mean, what's the significant um, features of this genre? Which, uh, uh, how, how can you say? What, what's uh, oh, what what's is polka? The music? Yeah. Polka is. Uh, like mostly to on two four beat like um, it is dance like uh, uh, like like this mm -hmm. uh, mostly sometimes faster sometimes slower I play uh, we in Estonia we have like polkas we have Reylander Reylander a little bit later but the most oldest genre is Lapajalavals maybe I play with Lapajalavals Lapa now mm, okay. flatfoot walls. <laughs> Laba Jalg is uh, this uh, part of the leg uh, mm -hmm. because we call it Laba Jalavais because uh, we mostly. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds very funny, sorry. <laughs> it's a funny word to uh, maybe learn. Uh, Laba Jalavais, it's. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, if, we, if we talk about Polka or Rainlander, you know, other people also have this music. Narodne music. Okay. We study. Da, Lava ja Lava is a Tolka Estonski dance. Can you show it? Yes, it's like it is going like this. But you can, there are like different versions. It's the same, funny as it sounds. But the thing is that you have to dance it very, you have to be very like ergonomical. Like uh, mostly the work uh, that is done is uh, with this Lapa Jalg, this part. And the thing is, you can do it uh, for hours. It's amazing <laughs> if you do it. Uh, but the, and that's why it's very primitive, because it's meant to be for hours, the dance. And uh, there are different versions. You can dance a snake, like uh, one is leading and you do a lot of shapes. It's similar to Lithuania. It seems that we danced on the festival. And the Pro yes. <laughs> Yes, oh, okay. uh, but uh, in festival we did this one version. There are also yeah. versions that you can do uh, with a partner, and then you can do Cologne, 
there are like different versions. Uh, so amazing, like you have one little motif and you create a lot of different variations of that. Is also in dance, it's cool. And uh, I play some of these labella valses now. And I play after Jan Rand. Jan Rand was also a really incredible Mauthar player. His playing was really clean. And uh, he was uh, firstly, he was uh, playing uh, accordion he, and uh, Kannel, like Kantele Kokle. Kokle? Nieto? Narod, no instrument. Okay. Like, like Kantele? Uh, yes, yes. Yeah, Gusle. Yeah, Gusle. Ah, yeah, Gusle. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, no, it's a lot of fun. No, Parmobil, it's a lot of fun. It's a lot of primary instrument. Yeah, it's a lot of instrument. Yeah. Uh, no, Peter Rekman and Snaju on the Kral Tolka, it's a lot of instrument. But normal, it's a lot of fun. No, it's a lot of fun. What? At него есть записи этого человека? Do you have any recordings? Jan Rand, да. Ну да. Ну, я не знаю, что много, а десять, может быть. У нас, я эти песни, что я буду играть сейчас, они я учила не Тварган, а он тоже Кусле. Kusle music of uh, all the languages are crazy in my head. <laughs> but yeah, Edi, Jan Rans Kusle Pesnu. Yeah, Igra, you should shoot the Bustre, such as Jesse, will not Okay.
seconds uh, try to dance this dance while playing. Okay, <laughs> uh, but it's a uh, it, uh, true true now. Uh, it's a bit difficult to find the correct tempo uh, without dancers, but I could try. Uh, it's a uh, we say that uh, if you check the second movement, then it's like the <coughs> right speed. How far? How the one, two, like this? Ding, 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 ding. It has to be very steady. Mm -hmm. I like to play like, uh -huh. but uh, if you have a dancer, then they kind of uh, how to say they uh, keep me. They uh, are yeah, and they are controlling me a little bit yeah. because uh, they used to have the competitions. Uh, the dancers they kept this uh, bear cup on the head, and mm -hmm. the one who couldn't lose any drop, they were the best dancers. They has you have to be like very steady, and only yeah. Labayan is working. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, but yes, together to play with the dancers is very different. You uh, you control each other and you manipulate with each other. So when I am alone, then I'm flying somewhere. Yes, but I try to keep a little bit the track. Mm -hmm. do, do you have any uh, videos uh, of this dance? Yes. Uh, I mean, uh, I have some videos where I play for dancers. Yeah, uh, I'd like really uh, to see them. Yes. <laughs> it's yes. interesting. But, uh, I would recommend you to come to Tallinn's uh, dance club one day, and okay. then we can dance all together. Because uh, while you dance yourself, you kind of experience it much better than mm -hmm. just watching video. Okay. So it's a, uh, uh, I think not this, uh, uh, today is Friday, mm -hmm. not next week, but the uh, week after, it was this week, dance club, mm -hmm. so. So is it regularly? Yes, every mm -hmm. other week on mm -hmm. Wednesdays. Okay. So not next week, but the, the week after. Okay. <laughs> And on, on your ordinary concert, people usually dance in yeah. Estonia or no? Uh, if, if I tell that, uh, yes, if you can mm -hmm. dance. So please. most of people, they know how to dance. Yes. Young people, people or older people? Uh, people who came to uh, such concerts. Mm -hmm. Yes, they are. Uh, yes, it's true. They are uh, quite uh, young. I even don't remember the age. It's mostly like maybe my generation. Mm, rarely re older and rarely younger, mm -hmm. but a little bit can be from everywhere, every range. Okay. Oh, I play bagpipe too. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, just check a little bit the tuning first. before it used to be that uh, every person uh, who played it built it uh, themselves so they looked very different of course they looked like uh, such shape it has this shape uh, of the seal because uh, most of our pipers they lived on the islands or near to the coast and uh, on the coast side so uh, and they used the um, stomach of the seal in older times or sometimes when the people lived seal. And sometimes it <laughs> also the dog um, stomach was used. Uh, it depends when the people maybe lived more in the center of the country. Do dogs? Yes, stomach? yes. I mean, so it should be much around. smaller. No, pro yes, then the, it was smaller. But uh, I mean, uh, it was so clever. People are so clever. They always adapt to uh, surrounding and and uh, and uh, it was often used like two or one pulled on 
And the most uh, crazy piper uh, from Kiuma, he said that uh, uh, like as more the drones piper has, as uh, the better and uh, greater player he was. So, like of course I had to have three <laughs> drones. Mm -hmm. And uh, how to say nowadays uh, this one was uh, restored, or my uh, my first teacher's father with his uh, no. My first teacher and his father, they started to uh, uh, remake it again in Estonia. It was totally dead in mm. some years. They started uh, doing it like in the end of 60s or in the 70s, beginning of the 70s. And they, they found uh, the, the chanter from one farm in, uh, around their home in, uh, uh, how to say, Mulgima, in the uh, middle of Estonia, where there is a big folk festival and everything around that area. And they found this and they started building it, watching the old pictures and uh, listening to the recordings and stuff. And uh, nowadays it's uh, so, I don't know, in my opinion, I can't say that it is Estonian traditional instrument because, I mean, I call it Tauli instrument. The name, I name it after the guy who made it again or remade it because uh, all the pipers had so different instruments and uh, I don't know, uh, my dream is that uh, there would be, I mean, my dream would be to maybe build a bagpipe, maybe that the Jan Bicht, the guy that I first had my experience from the archive recording, to play maybe his instrument that he used to play before. It would be very different from this one. But this is like quite modern, uh, the, now his son is making them and uh, he has done a lot of new holes in here and it gives me a lot of opportunities to play in different keys and everything. So oh. detailed. Mm -hmm. But... Uh, mm, and it has Goretex, it doesn't have a seal stomach anymore inside. <laughs> it's Goretex. And this is a uh, skin of the leftovers from the... I think it's cow skin or something left over from the factories. And uh, yeah. Any more questions? <laughs> ah, and the tune that I'm going to play, I made it, it's a little bit Norwegian influence. I lived there some years. It's called Fram after uh, one, ex one scientist who was called Fritjof Nansen. Maybe you know him, he has some connection with Russia also. In the, the expedition, he went to uh, North Pole or South Pole in 1893 until 96. And uh, like no other explorer before him, he totally survived with all his crew. Like he, uh, the boat that he asked to build from the shipmaker was with the bottom, egg bottom shape so that when the ice start to crack the ship, it doesn't break, but it lifting the ship on the ice where it got frozen. And uh, when spring came and the ship had uh, floated together with the flow somewhere else, then it got out from the ice mm. again. And uh, Fram means uh, further. And it's influenced from Norwegian spring like
играчите, че вълни по-истите, традиционално и тоже се увидят. And uh, after that, uh, one uh, tune that my, the same, the teacher of my, my first backpack teacher, Hans, who started rebuilding it together with his father, he did it. Um, why it calls? Karksi. Oh, you say it calls a calling song? Ah, to, the, I put together two tunes. The one is calling song, good why, song. Why, ah, why calling? calling? Yeah, like you, calling. Because uh, whenever there was some gathering or something, you know, someone has to call the people together. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. And uh, it was a uh, bagpipe player who did it with the mm -hmm. tune called Calling Tune. Mm -hmm. oh, th that is also functional in a way. We don't have so much of the, this kind of tunes. But uh, it goes like, goes like this.
try again one traditional tune. Uh, I play now the Seyan Bih tune, the first uh, guy that I got the touch of uh, archive recording uh, from Jan Bih. Uh, was it your idea to go to archive and I mean, research? The, like, the situation in Estonia, I didn't really go to archive. I was like, uh, I got already the digi digi digitalized uh, mm -hmm. music and uh, I just checked it from a computer actually. But uh, the thing is that we don't have any more these guys who could play the, mm -hmm. like this old music. Mm -hmm. So only way for us is to learn by listening also the monk harp music and bagpipe music. So this, this is the reason why we do it. So I play uh, these two polkas. One I played uh, before on monk harp, you can see if you recognize it. It is called the Uhusan Suve, which is, means there is summer in the air. But actually, it is a tune about uh, wild strawberries. The smell wild. of the wild strawberry. Wild? Wild. Ah, oh, wild. Mm. Wild. <laughs> the wild strawberries exist, but they, then they are not ready yet. <laughs>
would say that sounds more like some military march or something. Really? Yeah, definitely not strawberries and spring. <laughs> 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 we are so different. <laughs> hmm. It's very uplifting. Ah. <laughs> Техника другая, чем в Норвегии. Это так на записи было? The technique is other than Norwegian. Like a little bit, yes, I'm mostly using this card throat. This, like, if I would play it with the Norwegian technique, it would sound like this, I think. that uh, this has this other closing technique and if I would use this I am more limited to use my air more because uh, then I have to play like uh, 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 and uh, I block my throat mm -hmm. and I, they don't breathe with nose at all mm -hmm. but I am uh, so you decided by yourself kind of yeah mm -hmm. okay. it gives uh, more freedom to play uh, around mm -hmm. but uh, I more, I'm interested to also uh, check this Norwegian thing out more because it gives this uh, more the floating uh, energy stronger or how to say if I play with this Norwegian style because the music is very floating you know it is always like going like this but I like to play like this but I can't play it with the throat thingy. Mm -hmm. Do you compose music yourself with the mouth harp? Yes, that was my own tune. Ah, okay. This military tune. <laughs> <laughs> military strawberries. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> and, uh, marching berries. Yes, <laughs> marching. <laughs> I can play you my tune too. Mm -hmm. uh, the the other one that I did for the harp is a little bit Norwegian touch. Uh, this kangar, and it sounds like this. How was it? Oh. Uh, I don't know, that's definitely uh, dancing. Oh, cool. But the tempo in Ray Lander was a bit too fast, or mm. wondering. Too fast for what? Mm. Ray Lander. Uh -huh. I have to uh, think about it. <laughs> it's, uh, good. But for me, actually, it was also more military than strawberry. Really? Mm -hmm. oh. 
Oh, maybe I'll just change the name, like the st military strawberries. <laughs> <laughs> Martin, Martin, Martin strawberries. Ah, oh, okay, cool. Yes. <laughs> nice idea. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and there is also an idea for the illustration for this. Um, oh, I can imagine. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> I see that also actually in the mind. <laughs> so cool. The red soldier. Mm. Cool. Uh, I will uh, the, maybe I will finish up with uh, some tune. Mm -hmm. Maybe I will uh, improvise. And uh, I realized uh, recently that I play two s little uh, slow tunes, but it sounds really cool. So I try to do something slow. Okay. Good idea. Uh, Estonia we have this very famous composer called Arvo Bert and oh. uh, Arvo Bert and uh, he has uh, created a lot of uh, music uh, for music for children and mm. also won awards that is very popular among uh, musicians like uh, folk musicians and every kind of musician and uh, he did this uh, really cool tune which is called Uku Aru Wells uh, it's so beautiful and uh, slow. Oh, it's supposed to go now. Mm -hmm. um. hmm. I wanted to put it first on my CD, but then I thought it's so much problem with our authors, right? <laughs> <laughs> and everything. So I take something that is not that famous. Okay. Okay, I a little bit improvise and uh, if I don't remember the melody, I will play uh, for probably Badestan. We would never know. Badestan is yes, no? I know. Yeah. Yes. Okay, maybe I do very slow Badestan. <laughs> <laughs> I will leave it uh, improvise something I discovered recently. I bought uh, myself Hungarian harps from uh, Aaron. Uh, yes. Oh, Yes. And uh, I, I, uh, it's so. Uh, I just leave it improvise, and then maybe this tune comes to my mind.
Спасибо. Спасибо. I didn't uh, play this song actually now, but I played the song, uh, uh, children's song. Children's it song, is? like a lullaby? Uh, no, it is. It's very good now. Yeah, it is going the, like actually like this. <laughs> <laughs> is it uh, just seems to me or slow musical uh, through this instrument is more difficult to play than quick? Mm, uh, actually, this instrument I don't think it's mostly for melodies. Uh, like it's not very common that uh, we play melodies with uh, low harps. Uh, maybe at, uh, it's not. Uh, it just uh, doesn't sound the same. It's uh, it, uh, it's. If it's not very deep, then it doesn't matter. The I could play it faster too. Just if I play very low notes, I can't uh, take it very. It gives me an opportunity to play uh, because it's uh, how to say the sound is uh, the reed is so uh, soft that it makes me possible to uh, play more with the sound, mm -hmm. the long notes and everything. I have possibility to play all the notes very well out which uh, maybe with the uh, other harps wouldn't uh, have the same effect, I think. Mm -hmm. Just more difficult can be the lower notes because it's very deep, but uh, otherwise it's still the same. Mm -hmm. You mm -hmm. need to open the ears when you play on the lower so that it sounds deep. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. okay. Thanks. <laughs> Thank you for uh, coming and uh, I also have some CDs here and uh, I could play even more tunes, I just don't have the sense of time right now. <coughs> is it traditional too? Uh, this is, yes, uh, the, this uh, Aya project is uh, like, uh, there is some folk music but also a little bit other music. It's a cooperation with some Norwegian musicians. One of them is playing the hard anger fiddle, that, which is a uh, Norwegian traditional string instrument. and. Then there is a double bass and uh, and uh, flute and uh, bass clarinet player. It's mm -hmm. some folky stuff in there. And you're playing sax there. Yes, yeah. and bagpipe a little bit. Mm -hmm. And in the very first tune, a little bit uh, harp, but just for the little rhythmic effect. Mm -hmm. and do you play also traditional melodies? Uh, With this project. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. I have here. Um, it's uh, one Norwegian real. <laughs> it's yes, there are some traditional Estonian and Norwegian uh, tunes that are a little bit uh, arranged. Mm -hmm. Not very. It doesn't uh, maybe sound very traditional all the time, but with a little, how to say, <coughs> treat or mm -hmm. how to say. And a few of these tunes are also like totally out of co uh, traditional music context. Mm -hmm. But it's really cool. I mean, I'm a little bit sad that we don't play anymore together because, be just because I moved out from Norway and mm -hmm. we just couldn't have time to or possibilities to play anymore much money and everything. How much for ah, them? Uh, <laughs> I don't know yet. I, uh, I mean, what is the normal price of the CDs here? <laughs> <laughs> Для вас сегодня. Нет, кроме, кроме шуток, сколько за русскую примерно лицензию, такой ценник предлагают. В Эстонии, в евро, это будет где-то 10 и 8 евро. Ну, примерно. 500 рублей. 500 рублей. I'm sorry, I'm very bad with this. Uh, yeah. I was supposed to be here already yesterday, so I would have time more to uh, get into this uh, everything, mm. but I couldn't come. I had to come today, so... Спасибо. 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 Спасиб